Well, thanks again for doing this this afternoon, Stephanie. It's uh, appreciated. Um, I guess to start, can you tell us a little bit about your topic and, and how you decided upon that topic? Sure. Um, when I first was interviewed for the current school that I'm working for, the superintendent had mentioned this idea of a flipped classroom to me, and I had never heard about it before. So um, I got really interested in kind of figuring it out because I teach math. Uh, I teach eighth grade math. So a lot of times what happens is my students will understand what we're doing in the classroom, but then when they go home and they have to do the homework, I get the excuse that, um, you know, I got it when we were in school, but when I went home to do it by myself, I was really confused. So I got really interested in it to see if maybe this is something that would help my students. Um, and so I, I started implementing it. And the more I see my students in the classroom when we're actually doing some lectures, I do also have students who have learning disabilities that really struggle with paying attention. And so I've even become more interested in whether or not the flip classroom works for them as well. So I, I kind of took my topic um, and started to research this topic so that I can use it within my own classroom to really see if it's beneficial, especially since I do teach a subject that tends to be difficult for middle schoolers. Okay. I guess speaking of that topic that you're researching, when you first decided upon this topic, what sort of process did you go through to begin the literature review? So I started with going to the Sacred Heart database and I would research on, I, I used the at IT lib a lot, I used Eric. Um, I started there and then I actually went on to Google Scholar and I started by researching just the FOP classroom and I got a good amount of information but not too much. So then when I was reading through some of the articles, I started paying attention to some of the keywords and then that took me to research more uh, topics such as um, hybrid classroom and technology integrated into the classroom. Um, and there were a couple of others, but I, I really, you know, I had to really look at those keywords because there's not too much out there about a flipped classroom. So when I use those keywords, I started to break it down into, um, you know, homework and technology. And um, that that's really kind of where, where I took it from. And that's actually how I saw my topic being broken up into differentiated learning because flipped classroom could be a, a way to differentiate instruction. Um, I got a lot about the perspective. So I really, you know, I, I really had to kind of focus on a lot of different terms in order to get enough research to, to write my literature review. Okay. I guess to, to follow up on that, um, you know, once you got that, that research and started to write your literature review, how did you go about it in the beginning? So I would start by, I, I was bad. I kept reading the entire articles, <laughs> which took me a lot of time, but I would start by um, trying to find themes, different themes um, that were common between all the articles that I read. And then I, I tried to, I actually saw that mine was narrowing down. So first I focused on using the flip classroom as a homework uh, way to use, you know, as a homework, because it, it is, it's essentially a, you know, you're you're assigning the lesson as homework and you're doing the problems or the practice part in the classroom. So I really, really looked at homework from technology, which brought me to look at differentiating instruction, um, specifically differentiating homework, because this is a way to differentiate homework assignments. Um, and then I focused on uh, the flipped classroom versus the traditional classroom, because I saw that come up a lot within the articles that I was researching. And then I ended with looking at um, student teacher and even parent perspectives because that you know that was ultimately what the majority of the articles that I read focused on were those perspectives of, of those individuals and so I kind of saw that there was that funneling effect when I was when I was um, researching and um, I mean from there I like I said I tried to collect themes and it was hard at first because like I said, a lot of the articles that I read were about the perspectives, um, but I, you know, definitely had to organize when I was when I was reading. I found, um, and I'm probably going on to a further question, but that's okay. <laughs> I found when I was reading that 
Um, other than I, I took what a form one of your former students had said and, you know, I, I kept a binder and I organized everything based on the different kind of themes that I was seeing. And I, what I also found really helpful to me, especially when I was writing the, the literature review was um, if I saw something within the article that I felt was really good and I thought that I was going to really want to use that, I would not only highlight it, but on the back of my paper, I would actually make a little note for myself to go back to that page to that, you know, um, that uh, paragraph, that sentence, so that I remember to, to look at that and use that as a part of my literature review. Okay. Um, now that you're in the, the midst of the process, you're four or five weeks away from starting to collect data. What's mm -hmm. something you wish you had known when you first started this process? So reading through every single article <laughs> the whole way through, um, I know we had talked about in class, you know, paying attention to specifics in each article. And then if it was something that we felt we were going to use to go back and read through the whole thing. But I couldn't, I don't know why, I, I don't know if it's just me, but I just wanted to keep reading through the, all the articles. And now when I, when I really think back into, you know, the first couple of weeks when I started this, I think about how much time, because it, it does, it takes a lot of time to read the articles. And um, I, I really thought about how much time it took me to read articles. And then I'd get to the end and think, okay, well, I can't use this, <laughs> you know, this really, I didn't really find anything in here that was useful, for, you know, as used to me for, for my paper. So I think really trying to focus on, you know, making sure that while you're reading the article it, or right while reading those pieces, that something is important to you because you don't want to waste your time. I mean, granted, I did learn a lot from those articles that they weren't important to what I was trying to figure out. Um, so that, and then, I, I became really good at organizing my time and um, really managing when I was going to do certain things so I didn't overwhelm myself, you know, towards the end and so that I could get this all done on time. Um, I didn't really manage my time too good at the beginning, but again, it's all learning things. So really trying to sit down and figure out from the start, um, you know, what what time will I have available to read these articles or to um, do this research? I kind of... I kind of broke it down where I would spend one day uh, researching and then I would, you know, spend another day reading the articles that I've researched and then another day. So I really tried to make kind of a schedule for myself and I wish I would have done that from the beginning because, again, it would have saved me a lot of time, I, I think, and a lot of stresses. <laughs> Um, you've started to touch on this a little bit, but for mm -hmm. folks that were saying their first two to four weeks of EDL 689, what mm -hmm. kinds of advice would you give to them? So again, definitely trying to create a schedule because everybody's, you know, everybody's very busy. Everybody has lives outside of this. So it going into it, it might seem, and it is, it's, it's going to be overwhelming at times. But again, I think if you're able to sit down and really manage your time um, wisely, you're going to, you know, you're going to get that done. And then also the supports that, that are there, use them. Um, I know I've talked to you a lot about this, but you've been great throughout this journey. You've been very helpful. And knowing that I, you know, if I'm confused about something, I have you to reach out to. So definitely reaching out to professors or, you know, reaching out to somebody who's already done this before. Don't, not feeling that you have to figure it out all by yourself because there, there are going to become those times where you're, you know, you feel like you're, you might feel unsure about the direction you're going in. And again, you don't have to feel that way, making sure that you reach out to those people who are there to help you, because that's, that's definitely something that helped me <laughs> was making sure that if I had questions that I, I came to right away before um, digging myself into a hole that maybe I wasn't going to be able to get out of. Okay. Um, I guess to finish off with this, um, now that you're almost halfway through this this process. Um, is there any other advice that you'd have about the, the literature review, about the process in general? Um, just stick to, I would say stick to the deadlines. Try, you know, setting, try setting goals for yourself as far as when to get certain things done. Again, I, I talked a lot about the scheduling and time managing because, because that really is a, is a very important thing. It's, it, you know, making sure that you have that time to get it done so that you're not waiting till the last minute and 
feeling like you're never going to get it done. Um, so definitely setting goals and making sure that those deadlines are met because that, for me, that was something that was not only a breath of fresh air, <laughs> but it was something that really helped me to finish it at the time that I needed to finish it. And then now I'm doing what you had recommended. I'm still going in and doing my research and finding, you know, different things that I can keep putting in, but it really does help with, you know, managing this because it, it's a, it's a big paper to write, but meeting those goals, those deadlines is something that's, that's really important in order to be able to finish it. All right. Well, thank you very much, Stephanie. No problem.